The possibility of manually triggering a workflow in GitHub Actions is one of the most requested features ever, and people have tried to accomplish that using APIs or other custom triggers for a lot of time, but now we finally have the official way to do so. And I'm going to show you how right now in this 3 minutes Friday. Hi everybody, welcome back to Coder Dave and welcome to a new episode of the 3 minutes series. In each episode, I will try and explain you a concept or showcase a product or service or yet try to teach you something and all in just 3 minutes. Short videos, big value, hopefully. Before we start, make sure to subscribe to this channel. Just click on the subscribe button below right now and turn on the notifications so you will not miss any other videos like this. Today we talk about a long-awaited feature in GitHub Actions that is finally here, the possibility to manually trigger a workflow. In this video, I'm going to show you how to achieve that and how it works. Let's start the clock and get into it. You can now create workflows that are manually triggered using the new workflow dispatch event you can see over here. You just add it as a normal trigger for your action under the on close. And even though in this case I only have this event, you can stack it with all the other events that the actual workflows support, like the CI triggers, the PR triggers, and so on and so forth. When doing so and saving it, you will see that if you go to Actions and you go to your own workflow, this Run Workflow button will appear, enabling you to easily trigger a run. And from here, you can also choose which branch the workflow is run on. Just click on Run Workflow, and you'll see that your GitHub Action Workflow is run. As you can see, this is the one we've been working on. This is already as cool as it is simple, but there is more. In addition to specifying the Workflow Dispatch event, you can optionally specify inputs, which GitHub will present then as form elements in the UI. Workflow Dispatch inputs are specified with the same format as Action Inputs. Just add the input section here under the trigger. As you can see, in my case, I have two inputs, log level and tags. And I can also add that a specific input is required and even assign a default value if the user will not input it. To use those values in your workflow, you just have to use the github.event context, as you can see down here. And this will make them available to all these steps in your workflow. Let's check the UI. Go to Actions. Let's go to our workflow. And now in the Run Workflow UI, we not only have the branch, but also our log level, which is marked as required, with the default value we assigned, and the second one with no value and no requirement. Let's try to use this. Let's set log level as debug, and let's add tags, YouTube, actions, run workflow, and let's go see what happens. As you can see, the values have been taken, so we have the debug and YouTube Actions as we specified. And this is how you trigger a GitHub Action workflow and how you can specify input parameters to it. And we're done. Let's stop the clock. I've nailed the time again. Jokes aside, I'm super happy that this feature is finally here. And as you've seen, it's very, very simple to use. What do you think of it? Let me know in the comment section below what your thoughts are and also how you plan on using this feature. Thanks so much for watching, I really hope you enjoyed it. Hit the like button below, subscribe if you haven't already, and I see you in the next video here at Coder Dave.